I'm British halfpipe champion. I'm in the World Cup halfpipe team for Team GB and uh, currently aiming to get at Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics. And today we're here because Mario and Sonic have formed together to create Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games. It's great fun. I think it's going to be a big hit at Christmas. It's definitely going to be on the kids' wish list for Santa. All the events at the uh, Winter Games will be in this game, so you'll be able to replicate everything there. Mario is a skier and Sonic is a snowboarder. They use the Wii Fit board so as to get all the movements in, the same movements you use in real life persons. I mean, the, the skeleton game, you're actually on the floor on your front, leaning from one side to the other. So, yeah, it's, it's very uh, realistic. So, Mario skis and Sonic snowboards. And I feel a bit weird. It still feels dirty playing a game with both Mario and Sonic in it at the same time. It's a bit like dating your mate's little sister. It's just when Mario collects a ring. Yes, a ring. It's wrong. It's as wrong as Ronald McDonald sat greasy-faced and cross-legged, weeping with half a KFC family bucket between his legs. It's wrong, basically. Now, you'd think I would have gotten over this after the first instalment of the game, but I'm sorry I haven't. Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics is yet another series of mini-games on the Wii, which would appear to be what this franchise and console are all about. The controls are more accurate and varied than the first game, although difficult's not really a word I'd associate with these games, so I'm not going to associate it. There are many events to play, both single and multiplayer, with a special mention going to figure skating, an event that would be easy to miss out, but has been represented here with real imagination. Multiplayer bobsleigh is the most fun, with the focus on tilting together in unison, and using the balance board if you've got one does add an extra dimension to the interactivity of the game, and will make you look like an untrained high wire act, although you can still play quite happily without one. There is no compatibility with the Wii Motion Plus, which I suppose keeps the cost down for multiplayer action, and the responsiveness of the controls is still good without it. It is a very polished title that's aimed at a typically wide Wii audience, which probably means that its longevity won't last much past Boxing Day. Well, you... You might crack it open again New Year's Day if your granny's still feeling a bit sherry merry and you could do with 250 quid from you being framed. By the way, has anyone noticed actually that it's still 250 quid? Didn't, didn't you get that in 1995? It's just another stealth tax, isn't it? I'm going to write a letter to my MP, the Right Honourable Ronald McDonald. Has anyone seen him recently actually? 